My predictions for Microsoft's October 2016 event is coming up, including Microsoft's new Surface All-in-One, new updates to Windows 10 Redstone 2, and a lot more. Stay tuned. You're watching Nazmus Labs, where we talk about technology, gaming, rapid transit, education, and a lot more. So if you like the content, make sure to hit the like button, and also subscribe to be notified for all future videos as soon as they're available. Assalamualaikum guys, and welcome to another Nazmus Labs video, or today, I want to give you my predictions for what might be announced at Microsoft's October 2016 event. Yes, it's time for that prediction, and I think it's my first prediction of an event, a technology event that I'm doing. But I think I'm very excited. I, I think I want to do this because I'm very excited about what might be announced tomorrow. Uh, at the time of the recording, it's evening on the October 25th. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time or 7 a.m. Pacific Time. Uh, 26th of October, Microsoft will be unveiling its new future products. And here are my predictions for what might be announced. Now, there have been rumors that Microsoft might be announcing a Microsoft Surface all-in-one, uh, basically an iPad competitor. Now, this all-in-one is expected to be a full-on desktop PC with integrated monitors and keyboard and mice. I believe the keyboard and mouse will be Bluetooth based, uh, similar to how the iMac by Apple is is um, you know designed, uh, and it's designed to be. I believe uh, the rumor has it that it is going to be gray, the s same uh, magnesium vapor mac color for the Surface Pro and Surface Book. So we're gonna have um, a gray silver um, iMac like device, but from Microsoft running Windows 10 with the Surface brand. Brand, yeah, exactly. So. I don't know about whether or not this device is going to have any internal GPU. I'm expecting it to have an internal G GPU. I really would like to see an NVIDIA uh, GeForce GTX 1070 on it because I think the 1070 performs gr pro great performing performance punch and at, well well being on a uh, you know a relatively affordable price. Now, I, th I expect Microsoft to have this GPU for one big reason, uh, because as of now, Microsoft ha Microsoft's own Xbox Xbox Play Anywhere program, where you can play your Xbox One games on your PC, a Windows 10 PC, without having to purchase them again. Uh, so, but this prob the problem is Microsoft's current Surface devices, including the Surface Book that has a dedicated uh, GPU with similar performance as, as an NVIDIA 960M cannot play the games. So I cannot play Microsoft's own first party play anywhere Xbox game. So I really expect I really expect Microsoft to have an integrated or not a built in NVIDIA GPU inside their Surface all in one. And the rumor has it the name for that device will be Surface Studio. So from now on I'll be referring to that device as the Surface Studio. So I'm expecting an NVIDIA, NVIDIA GPU on the Surface Studio. I don't know which model it will be. Um, it might be 9, uh, 1060, but I'm, re I'm really expecting it to be the, on the 10, 10, 000, GTX 10,000 series because they really have revolutionized the uh, architecture of the GPU by and, and uh, by as a result the performance increase is phenomenal phenomenal significant in fact uh, in when, when you con uh, compare the cost and what you're getting for that cost I do not expect it to be on the 1080 I do expect it to be either 1060 or the 1070 um, but we will see what what Microsoft announces as for the processor I do expect it to be an um, uh, with the option for Intel Core i5 KB Lake processor or uh, for an extra money you could have Intel Core i7 same as the Surface Pro and Surface Pro book for Surface Book as well Surface Pro 2 and Surface Book um, Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book excuse me um, I don't expect a Core M3 processor because this is a des desktop device I do expect a, a RAM starting from 8 gigabytes and up because anything below eight, uh, especially for a desktop class device, is not s not sufficient. Because when you when you think about it, if you have a desktop, you most likely want to do heavy duty workflow workload have heavy duty workloads such as video editing, uh, uh, computer aided designs, or video gaming. You know, so I expect it to be more than eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, screen I expect it to be quote-unquote retina quality that means same as uh, how Apple markets retina quality I expect it to be a uh, 1414p because that is the sweet spot uh, that doesn't uh, you know break your budget for a 4k screen as well as 1080 is getting old so you wanna stand out so I'm expecting somewhere around the 1414p 
screen resolution for the Surface Studio. Okay, now we are done with the Surface. What else could Microsoft uh, Microsoft uh, announce? Well, Microsoft is labeling this event as a Windows event, uh, not a Windows devices event like they did on last year. So I'm expecting a lot of information about Microsoft's next uh, future plans for Redstone 2 operating systems. So Microsoft's uh, next release of Windows 10, or next big update to Windows 10, expected to be released on March 2017. So I expect a lot of a lot more information about uh, what might be included on the next on Redstone 2 uh, code names for the you know the next update. Uh, for until now, we have been receiving builds, of course, every week, um, or mostly every week. Uh, there were a couple of exceptions. But uh, every week there are some minor changes. Sometimes there were no visible changes, maybe only bug fixes. We did have few significant updates, such as a protact protractor on on the uh, Windows Ink workspace, as well as some Cortana improvements, and as well as uh, you know uh, settings improvements to the settings page, precision touchpads, and f you know some Action Center and Firefox Explorer improvements. But they're all have they all have been minor and not very significant. In fact. If you're running Redstone 2 right now, you can't tell the difference. 90% uh, of the time, you're not going to tell the difference from that, you know, Redstone 2 builds from the from those of anniversary update. Um, you know, so uh, right now we're Microsoft's keeping things under the cover, but we're going to find out what Microsoft be Microsoft will be announcing. Okay, I'm going to take a leap of faith here, and I'm going to assume Microsoft will brand the next update. Some somewhere along the uh, along the line as productivity update, Windows 10 productivity update, or Windows 10 creativity update. One of any 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 anything along this line, because from what Windows Central and Windows Beta has been reporting, Redstone 2 is expected to include a lot of productivity related features, especially Microsoft Office. So there's expect there's they're recording the Windows Central, Zach Bowden from Windows Central. There are uh, rumors about uh, having an office bar, like we have a Cortana hub and we have an Action Center. We're gonna, we also, there's also rumor to be an office hub that would fly out from the taskbar with uh, your recent documents, Cortana queries related to Office, and the like. So, uh, I, so this is falls completely in line with product productivity. And also another thing is that Microsoft uh, is expected to talk about their new version of MS Paint. Uh, Microsoft, uh, it, it, that application got leaked a couple weeks ago and I did a video on demoing the new Microsoft Paint and comparing it to the current version. But again, this is more of a creativity app, productivity app. Again, falls in line with Microsoft's productivity focused updates to Redstone 2. Now, the rumor had that Microsoft will invest a lot of uh, a lot of uh, features in Windows 10 Mobile for Redstone 2, but until uh, unfortunately, until now, we have not seen any significant updates to Windows 10 Mobile. A couple of changes to the Wi-Fi stack and the Wi-Fi settings page, as well as you know some sound changes. But you know the notification sounds have are been have been different now with Redstone 2, but uh, not a lot of mobile page changes. We do know that Continuum is for Windows 10 Mobile should get a lot of updates, including multi-window workflow so you could have windowed apps as well as um, running two apps side by side s without having to you know minimize or suspend one app uh, that is as well as a system tray might I add so I'm guessing if there are features new to Windows 10 mobile and if they don't talk about it I'm guess if they talk about it if any new features I'm guessing it's gonna be mostly continuum based because Microsoft is shifting pro focus to the PC environment so they're going to now focus on the experience of Windows 10 Mobile when you connect it to a PC hub or like a dock and use it on external monitor. I, I really don't think Microsoft wants to spend their time focusing on features that are exclusively designed for Windows 10 Mobile on the small screen. We still don't have a lot of features introduced in the anniversary update for mobile such as ink support as well as you know Windows ink workspace so I, I could imagine seeing that on unveiled that Microsoft Windows Ink support would be added to Windows on Mobile, but it might also be kept hidden because if Microsoft does announce a Surface phone, I really expect that to have inking support because Surface without ink is totally not cool, basically. It's, the pen is a part of a Surface heritage. I know that Surface RT and Surface 2 did not have pen support, but any all the Surface devices after that, including Surface Hub, Surface Book, Surface Pro, all have ink since then. So I really expect if there's a Surface phone, there has to be ink support, and if there has to be ink support, that means Windows 10 Mobile will have to get ink support 
and likely with it will come the Windows Sync X workspace. Again, that feature was uh, arrived on the desktop on uh, you know summer of 2015, so Windows Mobile will be a year late, almost a year late, but at least you are getting something, right? Um, that's Windows 10 Mobile. Windows 10, I talked about Windows 10 getting the Office Hub. Also, Microsoft will definitely talk about the new Paint, if God willing, if nothing changes. Anything else? There are there are mum, mumble mumbling <laughs> murmurs about the um, what do you call it Cortana Hub, a small cube that is supposed to compete with Amazon Echo. And Paul Thrott brought up a good point that Microsoft brought out a band uh, Microsoft Band before Apple released the Apple Watch, uh, and Microsoft didn't even try ho try to sell that product. And Microsoft killed the Band line uh, a couple months ago. So if Microsoft really introduces new hardware and it doesn't work, they'll m we have seen from evidence that they'll just kill it off. So I don't know if anyone wants to use a Cortana Cube. I think people don't even. I think Amazon Echo was an ex uh, w was a really well uh, went mainstream at least for the technology focused people because they were the first and for some reason we realized that we really like having an ambient or background computing AI always listening that we could talk to but now that Amazon is coming out with it, Google is coming out with Google Home I don't know if there there's a room for third player I, I think the experience has to be really good from the beginning for people to switch because I think once you buy one of these things you're not gonna switch, and I know Amazon. Pe the argument is Amazon does not have uh, the backend capabilities like Microsoft and Google does, and bec and that way Cortana can you know personalize your uh, itself for you depending on what y how you use it, what products you use, and anything you say if you anything you tell Cortana, the Cortana Cube will follow on your PCs and phones, such as if you set a reminder on the Cube, it'll be sh it'll show up on your PC and phones, but Google Home does that and. If you if someone already bought an Echo, I doubt they're gonna buy another Cube. I mean, they're gonna have to wait for you know something big like something really revolutionary or something. A feature the Cube or Google Home has to offer truly exceptional experience over the Echo, not just additional features such as your reminder following you on your computer for people to actually buy another device. In our case, the Cortana Cube. So Microsoft not only has to be as good. As Google Google Home, it'll have to have compelling compelling features for people who already invested in Amazon Home or Amazon Echo to switch. And Google already is ahead of Microsoft. So if people do switch, they're gonna most likely switch to Google Home first because again, Google now integrates with Android very well. And I want to bring up this point here: Google now is fast. When I say "Okay, Google," the entire Google now immediately springs up. Cortana, not so much. Cortana is slow, laggy, and is very un, uh, not good in user experience. Even on my powerful computer, it works, it, it responds, responsive, but co compared to Google Now, it pales in comparison. And Google Now is definitely a better experience. It's able to understand me better. It's also able to provide me with better, you know, services such as real-time traffic and and more uh, relevant search results because Google is just better at it. I have to say it. Uh, I hate to say it, but Google Maps, especially, is blows Nokia here Maps or Bing Maps out of the water. So things like that, Google Now still has a better experience. And if you're on Android, you most likely have Google Now built in, and you don't have to download third-party apps, just Cortana. So there you go. So that's my. Decision. I'm not too optimistic about the Cube at all, at all. I'm not optimistic, but we'll see what happens. Um, but I'm I'm really curious to see wh how Microsoft will market the Surface Studio, the all-in-one, because I, I don't know if a lot of people outside of gaming and professional environment buys a desktop. And well, um, I see Microsoft selling the all-in-one to um, businesses. I think Microsoft should also offer this PC and market it towards enthusiasts. People who love PC gaming, people who love editing video, the enthusiast, the prosumer. I think they should really go after prosumer and really make a mark when thinking about high-end desktop PCs. Currently, it's the gaming PC and the uh, Mac. Although the iMac and the Mac Pro are being, you know, fa falling behind further and further because Apple refuses to update the Mac Pro 2013. 
<laughs> for like I don't know since 2013 and even when it came out in 2013 it wasn't even the high, most high end computer although it's it you have to spend a Mercedes amount of money to actually get the Mac Pro but again I think Microsoft should uh, go after the prosumer as, as well as business because I think they could if they have a good device and they could if they could mar market the Surface Studio correctly they could you know make an impression for the prosumers who people who care about not the normal people who just uses computer for uh, spreadsheets and internet uh, for people who actually care about um, high-end computing, gaming, uh, computer aided design, uh, engineering, uh, design, uh, editing, you know, Photoshop, video production, any, anything, anything. The, I want. I really hope Microsoft can make a mark on that. So the Surface AIO or Surface All-in-One, Surface Studio, whatever you call it, will be a, one of the options when people consider buying. I hope the Surface Studio is one of the things people consider when they're thinking of buying a high-end desktop PC. But we'll see how Microsoft marks that markets that. But yeah, from for now, that's all I got in terms of my predictions for Microsoft October event. What do you guys think? Let me know what your predictions are. I would definitely like to know what you think or or you want to see Microsoft unveil. But yeah, yeah, I'll I'll definitely love to read what you have to say. So. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Make sure to like and subscribe to be notified of all new future videos that I make. Have a good one, guys.